two. I'm back with another brutally honest take on the M2 MacBook Air. And we got a lot to talk about because I'm going head to head with every problem. And we're just gonna give proper perspective to everything ever brought up about this M2 MacBook Air. Today's video is being brought to you in partnership with Epidemic Sound. There's a link down in the description to a 30 day free trial. If you do any type of content creation, upload to any social media and you need music, sound effects or sounds, <laughs> their library is massive and necessary. There also might be a promo code time sensitive for 50% off on the annual personal plan. So hit the link down in the description below. Let's talk about this M2 MacBook Air with proper perspective and consideration. Now, the biggest elephant, <laughs> the biggest comment that I get after I gave proper perspective in my previous videos, the only thing that most people can continue to bring up is SSD speeds. Now, I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna keep it 100 in this video, 100,000%. I did my own test on this 512 gigabyte SSD, which is the faster hard drive build because it has the two SSD chips. And I looked at the people that have the base model because I didn't pick that one up. I looked at their speeds, their black magic test, and I did a comparison. Now I looked at grass gadgets and a couple of other to not be named. <laughs> but what I noticed most is when it came to write speeds, it was only off by 500 gigabytes. So it's just slower by a slim, margin but when it came to read speeds the margin was a lot bigger because it was 50 percent slower than the previous two ssd chip build now what does that mean for you as a user when it comes to exporting which that's more of a pro task of exporting video footage and things like that it's going to take longer so a little extra time as well as when it comes to like transferring transcoding things like that it's going to take a bit longer and another reality is instead of uh, divvying up the you know stress and use over time to two chips, you're doing it all to one hard drive storage chip. So it's just something to consider. It's slightly a fair argument, but a lot of those people who are just like, how can they charge $200 more and not give the same SSD speeds? Well, that brings us to the second elephant is price. There was a price increase of $200. Mind you, the M1 Air, from 2020, that model is still available at its price point. Get the M1 if those things suit you, if you don't mind giving up the cosmetics and other upgrades, which let's talk about it. So yes, there's a $200 increase on this device, but what do we get for it? We got a slightly larger, brighter, better display. We got a better, highly improved webcam from 720p resolution to 1080p. The webcam that's on the likes of the higher end MacBook Pros that we've seen and we've been so greatly appreciative of. We've also received a higher core count in GPU, one core higher, and then three if you go with the higher end build. Along with that, we're given the better keyboard. This is the keyboard that we're seeing on the higher end 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros and it's here on the little old Wii M2 MacBook Air. We're also given that improved headphone jack with high impedance support. So that's more pro features, pro physical tech in the air. As well as we're being given Mac safes, gracious return, which those who know know is something to appreciate, as well as this has the four speaker audio system versus stereo speaker audio system of the previous model. As I said, this thing gets loud and the sound space is there. Different design, different placement and so forth, but still that Apple audio that we all know and appreciate. So I guess all of those physical and pro features are just supposed to come at no extra charge, I guess. And not so much that that's my argument. Here's the reality of what I wanna say when it comes to pricing is everyone looking at the bigger picture, our current economy. Inflation is through the roof. We just came out of a you know what, and huh, there's a such thing as a shortage. More than likely, without a doubt, cost Apple more money to build this laptop in 2022 than it did in the previous model. As they were able to lock in all of the parts, which I'm pretty sure they have in bulk, to build those M1 MacBook Airs at that price point. 
before the shortage, before the big debacle. This is post that debacle. And here's the reality. Every industry is hit. I just built a new custom PC. And guess what? All PC component parts are up in price. The old saying, hey, a better deal and a better budget than paying the price of Apple computers was to go and build a PC build that would give you way more performance and so forth is not the argument anymore because PC components are higher and the silicon chips inside of these MacBooks, you know, the M1, the M2, M1 Pro, M1 Max, and Ultra are rivaling their PC counterparts. And it's just causing a weird space, but let's just consider this. The entire industry across the board the entire economy and economics are all in a weird space right now. Basically, every industry is taking a hit right now. So next, let's talk heat. The infamous thermal throttling. And oh yes, we're gonna get brutally honest about it in detail. But before I do that, I have to tell you about today's video partner, Epidemic Sound. Now, as I've told you guys in the past, this M2 MacBook Air is an ideal beginner content creator machine that I highly recommend for those starting off to use. In addition to that, as a content creator, you're gonna need sound, music, and sound effects, and Foley arts, and things like that to improve your production. And that's where Epidemic Sound comes into play. They have a massive library. I mean, this thing is extremely big. And the whole point of using Epidemic Sound is just simplifying the process and avoiding copyright claims, copyright strikes, and losing monetization, all by a simple monthly fee, which we're gonna waive for the first 30 days. And if you do an annual personal plan, I have a promo code down in the description below, which is time sensitive for 50% off. So whether it's YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Epidemic Sound has you covered on all of those platforms for personal use and you can get commercial licenses. So hit the link down in the description below for the 30 day free trial. Use the promo code as it's time sensitive to get that 50% off. Now back to the M2 MacBook Air. Let's get messy, <laughs> thermal throttle messy. So my opinion and my perspective is instead of just taking everyone's word for thermal throttling and how it works, do your research. If you don't care to, then take our word for it, but be careful with that. You saw what happened. So I basically wanted to tell you and show you what thermal throttling exactly is, how it affects your device, and how it's not as bad as the doom and gloom was made to be. Thermal throttling, what is it and how it works? Thermal throttling refers to a CPU or GPU throttling, or reducing its frequency and therefore performance once a particular thermal threshold or temperature has been reached. Now, how your CPU is impacted by thermal throttling. Your processor or CPU will begin thermal throttling when it reaches a certain temperature range, usually around 90 to 100 degrees Celsius. And that is hot. This applies to both desktop and laptop designs. And yes, it is a much harder threshold for laptops to stay under due to their size and airflow limitations. Sorry for the bell, the market just closed. If you know, you know. It's known that laptops, due to their design and what they are, and especially these slim, thin ones that we love, it's known that thermal throttling or thermals are hard to regulate in these chassis. Now, why thermal throttling is a good thing? It's good to have perspective. Thermal throttling is a safeguard built into your PC hardware that prevents it from damaging itself into unusability. Remember in my first video, I told you guys, it's just preventing something bad from happening from too much heat. It may suck to lose performance that you pay good money for, but it's better to be dropping frames than permanently damaging your hardware. Ah, perspective. Now, to be fair, here's the other side of that perspective. While thermal throttling is better than disastrous overheating or shutdown, it still sucks. And unfortunately, manufacturers, especially Laptop manufacturers are notorious for putting out designs that have poor thermals. Listen, I saw that the thermal build or housing in the old M1 MacBook Air, which does throttle as well. Are, are, are we talking about that? I mean, the M2 throttles as well as the M1, but there was a different thermal housing in that design. And the thermal throttling housing in this one is not 
as beefy. It's, it's just not. And to take it even further, I remember not too long ago, literally like yesterday, I was trying to do like a pro task of using OBS to record my gameplay that's coming from my gaming PC. There's a dual PC setup that I have, and I will talk to you guys about that and show you that. But when you run that, since that's two PCs with good airflow, exhausting that thermal heat from the PC, that heat goes into the room, so it gets hot. Same thing happens when you use these laptops and all tech devices that get warm, even your smartphones. So I was trying to do OBS recording, on the M2 MacBook Air just to see if it could handle a 4K stream from a camera and then the gaming stream at 1080, 60 frames per second. Just for recording, it couldn't handle it. And the M1 Max, which is a more capable machine, I still had issues even on that. So just to put things in perspective, after doing that task, this machine was hot, but that is a task that's gonna push it to the limit. 90% of you get in an air to use an air for what air <laughs> was made for and not to be a pro. Even though you can do intermediate, beginner level pro-like tasks such as iMovie editing, some Final Cut Pro, and things of that nature. Just know that when you push it to those temperatures where it's getting close to damaging, it's gonna bring down that performance. It's gonna bring down those temps to protect your investment. Is thermal throttling that bad when you think about it from that perspective? Yes, you could design better thermals, but the design changes. You gotta understand, you, me, we like the design. So we have to deal with what comes with that design. My last and final perspective and point that I wanna point out in this video after going head to head with all of these issues and problems is, is it still worth it? Is the M2 MacBook Air still worth it? Still worth the purchase? I stand by the fact that I said that 90% of you buying an Air for what the Air was meant to do will be just fine. You know, that's a loaded question because most people are only arguing about the base model because everyone's trying to get the cheapest one and trying to see if the cheapest one is worth it. Listen, if you see the M1 MacBook Air and you're worried about SSD speeds and you, you know, sip the Kool-Aid of the current <laughs> narrative and you feel like that's the better buy for you, you get to save $200 and you don't mind skipping up these improvements, get an M1 MacBook Air. It's your money. Spend it how you feel comfortable spending it. But for those who like this design, whose heart is set on the M2 MacBook Air, and you understand, if you go base model, this is only to the people who want base, your SSD is gonna be slightly slower, which turns into, you know, slightly slower SSD. You know, those few shortcomings that I spoke on. But if you're using the air for what the air is meant for, you won't notice it. <laughs> and to those of you who are gonna upgrade this and get the 512 gigabyte, or maybe even the 1499 model and beyond, you're gonna add RAM and things like that. To both of you, yes, 